What's up you guys Aditi welcome back to our channel today we are going to learn a topic which is relating to personality it's relating to testing so there are different types of tests that we can do to find a particular thing or to test a particular thing um so there could be a paper pencil test it could be a questionnaire like a likert scale like rate from strongly disagree to strongly agree kind of a thing it could be computerized but today we'll talk about a test which uses ink blot as projective stimuli yes we are going to talk about rorschach test so we know that rorschach test is developed or was developed by hermann or hermann rorschach and he called this rorschach test as a form interpretation test because it used ink blots as a way to like the the test taker or the client would actually interpret the ink blot form um and we would understand their personality etc so that's why he called it as a form interpretation test he even actually published a monograph about this technique called like psychodiagnostics he firstly used or he had like 28 case studies which were normal subjects like i should say undiagnosed like we don't know if they have any kind of mental disorders but let's just say they're free from it and also people who had psychiatric um diagnosis so maybe neurosis psychosis even manic or depressive illness kind of a thing this is like back then that's why i'm just using both like manic depressive or i could have said bipolar 1 and 2 or just depression and he provided these 28 case studies to actually illustrate or explain his rorschach test but unfortunately a year after he published his book he died suddenly at the age of 38 so we don't exactly have any kind of interpretation or scoring or administration for this test uh if you have noticed i keep calling this as a rorschach test but there have been a lot of controversy you know what is this exactly is this a test is this a task is this a technique is this a method Uh, there's a lot of controversies about it, but because Rorschach, Hermann Rorschach, actually called it a test, we are also gonna just continue and call it a test. Let's first understand what the Rorschach test actually have. Like, what is his, what is, what is, what is the apparatus of the test? So there are ten bilateral symmetrical cards which has ink blots on them. The ink blots are symmetrical. So what I mean by symmetrical is like. if you have a paper and if if it has some image or a blot ink blot on it if you fold it exactly in half it is like a mirror so that's the reason why i'm calling it bilaterally symmetrical there are 10 cards like these five are black and white completely monochromatic and the other five are well out of those two are black white and red and the other three are multicolor um normally if you take any test they do have a manual and instruction like how to administer the test how to be score it how should we interpret like any like the, we need these instructions so we don't ex- exactly have an answer as to why some cards are black and white and why some cards have red in it and then there are some multicolored ones in them let's try to understand how this test is actually administered or um, how it is conducted so there are 10 cards and they are numbered so according to its number each card is actually presented to the test taker or a client so the one the first card will be given to them and then the examiner will ask oh what do you see what this might be um you know how i spoke about or you might be knowing about psychodynamic or psychoanalysis by sigmund freud and there is this free association thing um it this also has something like that where the client can just talk freely can look at the card and just say whatever is on their mind whatever they see it could be one word it could be a long essay it could be a story it could be anything and the test taker can just go on talking about it the examiner or anybody else is not going to intervene is not going to uh, help the test taker in any way it's just on the test taker or the client to just go on um explaining or elaborating what what the ink blot means to them or what they are seeing etc etc also uh, also the test taker can look at the card this way vertically horizontally ulta pulta karke 
um, in any shape, in any way, and the examiner will not stop them or tell them, "Hey, this is how you're supposed to look at it," or nothing of the sort. This is what the test taker does. Let's understand what uh, an examiner would do because we would be in place of the examiner, right? Actually, you are a psychology student or already a graduate. Um, so, as an examiner, you will be, or we will be, actually just writing down every relevant information about the the test taker like so let's say whatever he's saying or she is saying we will just write it verbatim like word to word we'll just write it down you will also uh, notice observe some non verbal gestures cues um, the test taker that we can see in the test taker their body language anything their facial expressions anything any of the sort we will write that down as well we will also write down how long they took to actually like observe the card and they started speaking and explaining what is on the card all of that like jo bhi hota hai when they are actually looking at the card when the test taker is looking at the card the examiner will uh, note everything down this was the first administration like when the the test taker is actually presented with the, the the cards for the first time what do they say now sare 10 cards hone ke baad we will present the first card again to them uh, this is the second administration which is known as inquiry this is done so that we can try to understand how the the test taker is actually perceiving the ink blot and what aspects of the ink blot are being perceived and where it's actually coming from like whatever they are seeing So in the first administration, we ask them, "What do you see, or what this might be?" Right. In the second administration, which is the inquiry, we would be asking things like, "Why did you see this? Or where did you see it on the card, etc., etc." Like, "Why did you see this? What made you think that this is a tiger? Just look at it. Why did you think this is a tiger? Just look at it. Why did you think this is a tiger? Just look at it. Why did you think this is a tiger?" probe a little bit this is generally done so that it helps us in um, scoring and also interpreting the scores later so first administration second administration is inquiry third is testing the limits so we would present to them the cards again and we would ask them um like so sometimes the test taker would not just look at the whole ink blot they would look spe- at specific parts and just tell you that this looks like a tiger or a bird but they would not take the whole ink blot into consideration for instance in for this is just an example i'm giving to agar upar ka part dekh ke they said something ke chahiye aise se dikhta hai then maybe the examiner would would point them at a bottom part or something and be like acha what is this look like to you so generally we test the limits or the third administration is done to get gain some more information some additional information it is also to help the test taker like refocus on the ink blot because maybe jab pehli baar dekha tab apne kuch socha when you look at it look at it again you think about more stuff so to to refocus on the task and also if there is any confusion or misunderstanding agar ho ho um that they that the test taker is thinking about then that can also get cleared out in the third administration or when you are testing the limits this was how you administer the test like you conduct the test now let's try to understand how this test is scored so there are several categories five categories uh, on the basis of which we can actually score this test so one of them is content content is like what did you actually see in the ink blots or the form of the ink blot the shape of the ink blot it could be a full human figure it could be a part of a human body with a leg or just a head or um just the body without the head it could be anything it could be a bird it could be a tiger i don't know why i keep giving an example of a tiger but whatever so that's the content second is location like where did you actually see it on the card was it upar ka part was it niche ka part was it the whole thing where the location sometimes test takers can look at a card and they may lo- they may think of what it is without looking at the ink blot like the ink blot does not look like anything but the blank space around it looks like something to them so that would also be location third one is determinants so basically this is a little more complex is basically what part or what feature of the ink blot actually made them 
think about um, a particular object so it could be the color it could be the form or the shape it could be the movement it could be the shading you know some parts are darker some parts are more highlight or like less dark shadowy so all of this would be determinants then there is the fourth one is actually popularity so when i show you a card um there could be uh, one answer that generally bahut logo ne diya hai which would be very similar to a general public uh, but then there could be some rare responses as well which will not be how the general public viewed the card so also the popularity like what kind of response do you give does your response match with the general population or is it a rare, rare response that is also noted down and the last one is form so form is where we match the like you you looking at um a, an ink blot pattern and we are trying to understand if it matches like jo actually wo ink blot ka pattern hai does that like what the test taker said ki acha this is, this looks like two birds um does it actually correspond or does it match with the part of that ink blot or the whole ink blot that's form uh so this category form actually it is a uh, seen as a reality testing so generally psychotic patients score really low in the form level uh, i just spoke about like just the five categories of helping us score a roshak test there are many sub categories which i won't talk about in this video i will make a separate full fledged video this is just like an introduction to roshak um okay so like i said earlier there is no proper manual or instructions this is one way of scoring the test um the other best way to score the test is given by exner john e exner junior i think he gave an exner scoring system which is the best scoring system for roshak test also i'll explain that as well in a full fledged video let's come to interpretation which is kind of kind of going to be the shortest part of this video because um there can be various ways you can interpret a particular thing and um i am not very equipped and or even competent because i've not studied rosha completely like how do you work and like, administer the test etc so um you need a lot of knowledge about personality dynamics so i can just give you some examples to understand how you actually interpret the scores so like i said in popularity if your answer matches with the general population ka answer then that means that you are kind of to not have mental disorder whereas somebody who is, has psychotic symptoms for instance they may give a rarer response their forms would be a little not as corresponding with the the part of the ink blot or the full ink blot so they will score low uh, so that way their answers won't actually match with the general population which is a way of knowing that they may have a certain mental disorder or whatever we are trying to interpret another one is that if you respond faster that means you are good uh, at social relationships because um i speak i spoke about this in maladaptiveness in the previous week's video where i spoke about if Uh, it's mad adaptive when you when you refrain from having social relationships you push yourself away from social relationships it could be because of anxiety it could be because of panic disorder it could be because of depression it could be because of a schizoid or schizotypal um it could be any kind of personality disorder so yeah so if you are getting fast responses then it shows that you are comfortable with um social relationships whereas if you take time to respond um, when you are when you are taking this test it may reveal that this individual or the test taker struggles with social relationships let's talk a little about um the criticism of this test firstly it lacks reliability you know what I, what do i mean by reliability if i conduct a test on you today and if i conduct the test on you the same test on you an hour later or a day later or a week later or a month later or a year later uh, it should give me the same result but this test does not one of the reason is that 
it's highly based on the examiner's interpretation so if there are two people interpreting the same administered test on like a, on the same test taker both could um, interpret it very differently so hence this actually lacks reliability the second criticism is that there was no proper scoring system so there were multiple practitioners uh, researchers that actually tried to come up with a a scoring system to make this test a standardized test but it was kind of futile uh, until Exner came and he gave a scoring system but still this test kind of lacks validity validity means that the test when we say that a test is valid or the test has a validity it means that the test is measuring what it says it will measure so if I talk about MMPI uh, Minnesota multiple multi personality multi phasic test uh, mmpi um, it says that it will measure personality so it does measure personality if we talk about this test i keep forgetting the name it's a uh, depression killer test so it does measure depression so in this case it kind of lacks validity because rosha test does say that that it assesses personality characteristics and emotional functioning but does it like are we sure that it does it actually assess these variables so the answer is kind of no because it doesn't actually help us uh, diagnose or it doesn't help us assess if a person is diagnosed or is suffering from a particular mental disorder like maybe depression or anxiety but it is helpful when it comes to any kind of thought disorders and schizophrenia related symptoms or schizophrenia related disorders I can't speak to you. Um, long story short even if this there has been a lot of criticism there there is a problem in scoring and interpretation uh, there is no proper manual there's no proper instructions yet this test is widely used okay it's still used in school it's still used in clinics and that is it for today's video i hope you learned about rosha this is just an introduction i'm repeating again don't come at me in the comments it was just the introduction to in, to uh, help you understand what rosha test is like i know i did not give any pictures because it's not kind of allowed i'll just give you a couple of them that i find online but that's it because you actually have to buy the kit and it's quite expensive. So even if I would have them, I would not be able to like show it over the internet. I hope you understand. Um, yeah, so if you want more videos like this, please share this video, like and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you next Friday with another psychology video.